says to Nehemiah in Susa, the capital of Persia, uh, a thousand, thousand miles away from Jerusalem. Verse 4, verse 3, he says to, to, to Nehemiah, and then he says to Nehemiah in verse 3, read it with me. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The wall, the wall, broken down. And its gates are burned with fire. See, you may not understand the significance of this wall. But back in those days, the wall surrounding a city meant everything to the community and those outside of the community. The wall says something about the God they serve. Walls were not just put up in those days. Walls are important. Walls stands for the God you serve. It's a representation. The stronger your wall is, the stronger your God is. The weaker your wall is, the weaker your God is. Let me illustrate this. I live in North York. That way, I was going to go that way. Jeremy knows. In North York, most houses have wooden gates and fences. Uh, I have a wire fence. And, and they're, they're, they're nice and, and, and somewhat tasteful. But what does it say about our neighborhood? Wooden gates and wire fences. But you go a little further west of us to bridal path. What would you see? They got a few big iron gates. Ever seen the gates in those houses? No, no, sorry. Those mansions? You can put two houses between the gates. It's big. It's huge, you all. It's, 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 it's got lights too. So what are those folks living in their mansions saying? What are they saying about themselves? We are it. <laughs> Gate tells people about you. We are the big kahunas by the size of our gates. In the same way in Nehemiah's days, if you are a superpower, if you are a kingdom, you, you will have walls surrounding your city and your strength and, and your power. Listen to this. Your strength and your power tells the world about the God you serve. Because if your God is powerful, it would help you conquer any intruder who wants to come and try to overtake your kingdom. Uh, if you go to those, those houses, maybe Neil has gone to do work there, he will tell you, you know, you have to press the bell and then you hear something, you speak to an intercom and then maybe if you're lucky, you know, boy, a fortress. Now I want you to see this picture in Nehemiah of what's happening here. Here is Jehovah God, the God of Israel. The God who made a covenant that this Israel is going to be my people. And it showed the world in Egypt that there's no God like this Jehovah God. Don't mess up with Israel, you all. Because it showed Pharaoh who was in charge. So here is Jehovah God up here. And here is the wall surrounding Jerusalem. And they look like they need some help. Hey, hey, your God needs some help? Looks like your wall needs some help. 
let me ask you. When people look at your life, how do they see God? Do they see a weak, impotent, spineless God? Or do they see a strong, mighty, powerful God? One of the ways your friends got to get to know, one of the ways your friends get to know this God that we've been praising and we've been serving, the God you said you serve, you may not know it. One of the ways that your friends will know this God is by looking at your life. That's why Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, he says, But you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. What kind of priesthood? I can't hear you, church. What kind of priesthood? If you're sitting beside a lady, turn to the lady beside you and say, Hello, princess. If you're sitting beside a guy, <laughs> take a look at that guy and say, Hello, Prince Charming. <laughs> now, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. They may not feel like you're talking to them. But Peter says, You, my brother, you, my sister, are a royal priesthood. Oh, you are God's own possession. Why did God choose us, Peter? Continue reading that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into the spiritual light of his son. Good Lord, somebody give him a, give him a praise for taking you out to bring you in. You're not hearing what I'm saying this morning. In other words, God wants to show you off as you've been singing this morning. So the world, the whole world may see for the glory of the risen king. Oh, I feel an anointing in this place. Somebody lift up your hand. Let me pray over you right now. Somebody lift up your hand toward the heaven and pray this prayer with me. Lord, Lord. let my life let my tell your story for the glory of my risen king. Amen. Amen. Oh. You know as a parent, I love showing off. I love to show off my kids. <laughs> when I go see Adam play football or basketball, you should hear me cheering, and I cheer loud. <laughs> and I let, the par I let all the parents sitting in the stand know, anytime Adam make a, a, a nice switch, or anytime Adam is a running back uh, in his football team, and anytime he gets a touchdown, and then he do the somersault, I go, that's my boy. <laughs> I, go, I go, I look at everybody, ah, that's my boy. I like to show off my, I like to show off my wife too. Oh, you, you, let me tell you something, men, men, where are all the men in this house? Let me tell you something. Take care of your wife. If you're not married, take care of your woman. You know, you don't know, you don't understand this, but when people see your wife or they see your woman, it's a reflection of you. Oh my goodness! When people take a look at us, we are a reflection of God. We are. That's why God wants to show us off. That's why he wants to make the world see his glory, to proclaim the excellence. So when they sit tight, you go, mm -mm, what a man. <laughs> what a hunk of a guy. What a dude. Uh, oh, God did an overtime on this dude, man. <laughs> to proclaim the excellency of his name. Let me ask you again. When people take a look at you, what God do they see in you? Oh, they seen a God because you're telling them you're a Christian and you profess it. The world, the world. But this world represents lives. 
This is not just war. This represents people. And it also represents a God. I'm not just talking about your life. People should walk into this building and not see old, dilapidated building. Or people should not walk into this sanctuary and see old, worn-out carpet. Well, we've had them for 25 years. Can't afford new carpet. What are you talking about? Your church can't afford a new carpet? Oh, we're just kind of trusting in God. Trusting in God? Don't you know your God deserves your best? Mm, kind of. Wait a minute. That is apathy. Everybody say apathy. Put, put it up, put it up. That's the problem, that's the problem. That's the problem. That is apathy. That's the problem here in, in, the, first, in the first three verses of Nehemiah. That's apathy. But you would miss. You would miss the main focus of chapter 1. If all your focus is on this pile of rubbles, you miss it. If all your focus is on this pile of, of rubbles, you will miss the main focus of chapter 1. Oh, you say, Pastor, but, but, but how can I not focus on these things up here? Like, like it's in my face. I know. But I want you to see something else. I want you to see passion. Everybody say passion. For a moment, I want us to move from problem, because we all got them, to passion with me. Look at verse 4. Read verse 4 for us. Read verse 4 for us. Verse 4 of, of Nehemiah. Keep reading. Read it for us. When I heard these words, mm -hmm. I sat down and wept yes. and mourned for days. Mm. And I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Stop there. Church, that's what I call passion. And when I speak about passion, I'm, I'm not talking about, uh, when, when I speak about passion, I'm not talking about a brand of perfume. Okay, I, I'm not talking about a, a brand or a brand of perfume. Put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up. I, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about Elizabeth Taylor's passion. No, not that kind of passion. I'm talking about a passion. Thank you. Put it up. Put it. Put passion up. What passion is? I'm talking about a passion that moves you. That moves you. That makes your heart beat fast. <laughs> After God, like God's heartbeat, you were singing that song, Lord, break my heart for what breaks your heart. Put the passion, put passion up. I'm talking about the fuel that drives the vision God has given for your life. To do what folks says cannot be done in your life. The fuel, put it up, passion. The fuel that drives, the, passion, this is passion. No, no, go back to passion, what passion is. Go back to passion. You're doing all right. Just go back to passion. Put it up, what passion is. For people who are riding. Okay, the solution, put the solution up. Okay, keep going, the solution. Okay, go, go. You're losing the solution. Okay, put the next one up. No, no, go down, go back. No, passion is what moves you. The fuel 